today I'm looking at the BT3 Windows 10 mini computer. Um, just to show you quickly what you get included in the box, the unit itself and the power adapter is supplied there. That's a three pin UK. We also have a quick start user guide. This just gives you a rough overview of the ports that are on the box itself and you get a HDMI cable here. It's a standard HDMI socket on the box. Looking at the top here we have a matte effect finish on the top panel. On the sides it's a glossy finish, a bit prone to fingerprints but it looks quite attractive. Very much in the style of the Android boxes. You'll notice we have a SD card slot that takes up to 128 gig with two ventilation slots above that and two USB 2 ports. On the back panel we have the power button, there is the adapter input, a single USB 3 port and the HDMI there as well as the Ethernet port. The 3.5mm jack here is marked headphone but it also works as a microphone socket too, so dual use for that. On the other side nothing there. On the underside we have four rubber pads, stop it moving around and a ventilation grill there at the bottom. Booting up the PC now, just exactly the same as you would get with a normal computer or laptop. Boot times were pretty quick on this actually. Um, you'll notice we're going into the user account here, that's because I've already registered. You'll have to go through that process if you're doing it for the first time. Uh, here we're looking at the system and you can see we have the 2 gigabyte of RAM and a licensed version of Windows 10 32-bit. This version is 32-bit, not 64-bit. Here we're in the device manager and we have a Toshiba uh, solid state drive. We'll take a closer look at that in a while. Um, all the other aspects are very much the same as you'd expect. Intel graphics and we have the wireless and wired network adapters down here. Here we have the Toshiba hard drive which has been split into two separate partitions. Um, so we have a slight increase in storage space over the previous models. We're up to just under 60 gigabytes in total. Taking a look at the task manager here, you'll notice the quad core, and despite the X5 name, it's a quad core processor. It's a newer version over the older one, which was in the compute sticks. Uh, the memory here, we're using just under one gigabyte of RAM. That's okay, as long as you're not doing heavy multitasking, it'll probably be fine for most people. CPU Z here, um, this is the newer Cherry Trail processor. You'll see the clock speed will vary considerably depending on the number of cores that it's using. This does have a very low thermal power and um, pay attention to the instructions as well because it supports all the recent ones that will help with some software with the performance of the processor. I'm testing the Toshiba drive now. We've got read and write speeds similar to a traditional hard drive. The improvement comes with the random speeds which are significantly quicker. It's quite a good speed for the drive to be honest. Here I'm running a real world test with Lightroom 5. I'm exporting 16 megapixel RAW files and it's taking around about 10 seconds um, per file to a high quality JPEG. If I compare it to my 6 core desktop processor that's taking it about two seconds per file. So you can see the performance difference, not unexpected, though it is usable, it's gonna take a bit longer to do um, heavier tasks like this, which are quite intensive on the processor. Moving on to the tablet mode on the desktop, you'll see we have the tiles here and you can move them around and adjust the size of those. That might work quite well if you're using it as a media computer. I prefer the desktop if you're using it as a replacement for one. Moving into the personalization settings, there is some personalization you can do on the computer. I like the lock screen where you can adjust what's shown there, although it's quite a flat operating system in look, and there isn't a huge amount of customization that you can do to it, so perhaps that's something Microsoft might look at over time. This is the newer start menu. I find it's quite good, I get on quite well with it. On the right you have the tiles and you can expand that, that's the minimum setting for those and I'm just running through the installed apps to see what's installed there. If you alternate click on the start you will also have quick access to some of the main settings including the control panel, task manager etc. 
Quick summary for me on the B-Link BT3 Windows 10 Mini PC. I quite like the form factor that offers some additional connections that you don't have on the compute type sticks. You have extra USB ports, you have the 3.5mm output. Um, although it's taking up a bit more space, it's still a very small compact computer and um, it's something which is very easily fit under a TV or if you want something that's very small it could work quite well as a desktop PC replacement for some people. It's not my first choice if you're a power user. Obviously there are some limitations to the processor as I've shown but it works quite well for day-to-day -day running of normal tasks. A uh, couple of other points to mention. You don't get anything included in the box so you'll have to add your own keyboard and mouse which I don't see as a huge problem. That's something you might want to look into as a media PC, possibly one of these smaller wireless controllers but um, it's quite a nice computer in most respects and it does offer increased storage over the previous um, mini HDMI models which were quite limited or up to just under 60 gig you'll probably want to expand that with a hard drive or use the SD card slot for that one potential limitation is the 32-bit operating system. For most people it's not going to be a problem, it's just if you're running specific photo or video editing software, which isn't really the primary task of the computer, you might find yourself a bit more limited with that. Um, for other tasks I think it actually works quite well, but um, perhaps later models will increase the storage space um, and the RAM available and run a 64-bit version of Windows but um, that's obviously going to increase the cost. So this is priced quite competitively. It's a bit more than some of the Android boxes, but you do get uh, a decent modern processor and extra on-board storage. So I think it's quite a strong offering for what it is. Um, just bear in mind that there are obviously limitations regarding the hardware, which you can't upgrade, but it will function as a normal computer does, and you can add peripherals, just scanners and printers, as you would do with a normal computer.